So Nintendo wants Splatoon 2 to become a competitive multiplayer game. And, I mean, obviously that's the main aspects of this game. It is a competitive multiplayer game. But specifically, they have been pushing it hard into the eSport realm. And that's all fine and dandy. But there apparently is an issue with Splatoon 2 that has been overlooked uh, by a lot of people mostly because I don't know if this matters as much to a general consumer of Splatoon 2, but I definitely have seen some of these issues in this game myself. Um, I'm just more of a casual player, so it, it doesn't bother, bother me as much. But Oliver Brammer did some looking into some of the issues with Splatoon 2, uh, specifically in terms of the rate at which information is transferred between players. Now, obviously, there are multiple factors to this, your internet connection, your speeds, and, and the distance you, away from players you are, and all this, but essentially, Splatoon and Splatoon 2 work on a peer-to-peer uh, situation. So instead of connecting to a dedicated server uh, that can handle more data transfers faster, it, it it connects you to people directly. So if I'm connected, say I'm playing with 5J Gaming and Splatoon 2 over in Minnesota, that's a, that's going to be a pretty fast connection between us. But then, you know, someone else that we're playing from might be over in Europe, and that's going to slow down, that's going to have a slow connection between us two and that person, and that person's latency to us is ultimately going to cause me and 5J to also have more latency between him and I, even though we only live about an hour and a half away from each other. So when you take this all into consideration, it turns out that competitive Splatoon 2 is something that is extremely hard to justify on the system. Now, there's a lot of technical explanations for this, and I'll give a full link to the article and all of the graphs that you can run for yourself to verify this information. Uh, but there's a lot of things that go into update rates between games, you know, from ping and tick rates and network solutions, all this stuff, a lot of things. Peer-to-peer -peer networking is the solution that Splatoon 2 uses uh, and Splatoon uses, and it's generally considered a worse way to handle uh, this kind of issue in an FPS. You you want as fast an update rate as possible. Essentially, you want a 60 hertz update rate. Doesn't matter if the game's running at 60 FPS, you want the update rate to be 60 hertz across the platform because that's going to allow information to come more accurately in. Uh, to give you an idea of, of what why update rate matters, have you ever played Splatoon 2 or even the original Splatoon? And even though you splatted someone, like a half second later, you also got splatted, even though they didn't hit you with anything visibly on screen. That's because of a delay in how things are transferred. And one byte of information that got through that transfer hit you for twice the amount of damage, even though that person was already splatted on your end. And this leads to inaccurate uh you know, combat situations, and in Splatoon 1, it would actually lead to some disconnects, because people using faster fire rate weapons would not up, you know, the, the game would not update fast enough over the network, uh, causing you to get disconnected more often, and Splatoon 2 uh, essentially runs at 30% less update rate overall than the original Splatoon 1. In fact, on my notes here from his article, because it's a lot of technical jargon that's really hard to wrap your mind around. He, he does go well into depth explaining it, so again, I encourage you to check out the article. Uh, but it says that Splatoon 2 transfers data online 30% slower than the first game. Uh, to give you an example, the original Splatoon ran at 25 hertz, a solid 25 hertz, and Splatoon 2 ran at 15.75 hertz. And it's notable that even though the original Splatoon ran at 25 hertz, because of how Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, uh, how it dealt with its latency and its dedicated server solution, uh, it actually technically ran worse than Splatoon for transfer rates of data and latency. And it comes down to the fact that Splatoon 2 uh, runs at 15.75 hertz in comparison to that 25 hertz. That's almost a 10 hertz decrease or, you know, quite literally 30% slower than the first game. And that is a massive impact on competitive multiplayer at higher rank level when you're trying to make this an eSport. And a lot of this, you know... It, isn't necessarily as big of an issue in local play, right? You know, when you're talking about esports, people are playing locally uh, through wired connections on the same network, and the latency is going to be extremely small. I think the latency average on Splatoon 2 is something like 137 milliseconds or something like that uh, compared to 
Yeah, 137 milliseconds in real-world latency in Splatoon 2 online matches. And this is just an average. It's not always this. It's a lot of times it's higher, a lot of times it's lower. And the average for Splatoon 1 was 113 milliseconds. So you're adding you know, 24 milliseconds of lag into the game. Uh, and Nintendo advertised at one point that uh, they, they've considered uh, various ways of dealing with uh, data size and reducing the size of it. And the, trans- the transmission data size has been decreased thanks to some optimization, meaning connection errors will happen less than in the first platoon. And for the, the, it's accurate, but based on the breakdown of information, like I notice I disconnect from Splatoon 2 less often than I did from the original Splatoon, but the differences are actually really, really small. It's about a 9.5% improvement or so on data transfer, but it it doesn't actually solve anything because you're still getting the additional lag on top of it. So yeah, maybe you're not disconnecting, you know, 9.5% less than you did in the first platoon. But when you do get to play, you are not getting accurate information um, when it comes to when you're hitting opponents and when they are hitting you. Uh, there are actually videos out there showing that people are literally behind a wall. Someone fires a gun and they die even though it appears they never got hit by ink. And what happened is they really did, you know, it's potential potential that they actually did get hit by ink, but they got hit before they went behind the wall. But because of the delay in the data, uh, you don't see that on screen. And it just really, really can affect anyone who's seriously trying to play this game competitive. And the reason why this matters for the competitive esport community is that a lot of esports stuff are played online. Um, while there's in, in event tournaments, your practicing happens online, and you can't practice <laughs> uh, by playing online if the latency is that bad. And honestly, this a lot of this can be solved if Nintendo would just use dedicated servers. And this is what's really weird uh, that Nintendo is charging for online services, right? But they're still not using dedicated servers uh, in their online experiences. So you're paying to essentially have a peer-to-peer connection. I know that you get extra bonuses and discounts and all that stuff, but if Nintendo doesn't even have online dedicated servers for their multiplayer, then what, why are we paying them to just use our own internet connections to connect to each other? That, that's essentially what's happening. If they would use dedicated uh, servers, here's an example of what could happen. Like between Manchester, UK, and London, UK, the ping would be about 20 milliseconds on a dedicated server. So Splatoon 1's real-world latency, if they had dedicated servers, is about 78 milliseconds, while Splatoon 2's would be 103, which is an improvement over the original Splatoon. Uh, And if Splatoon 2 had a real-world latency with 60 hertz update rate, it could hit 57 milliseconds, which would be about a 40% increase um, over what the connection speed is right now. Uh... Again, a lot of this is technical jargon, and many of you probably are not going to care, but Nintendo needs to get on board with the dedicated server issue. They need to increase the refresh rate to 60. Uh, They need to focus heavily on making sure that these these competitive games, whether it's this, whether it's ARMS, whether you know it's Mario Kart or Smash, all these games, that they start using full-on dedicated servers with proper refresh rates, uh, especially once they start charging next year. If Nintendo's charging for online, they need to have dedicated servers because if they don't have dedicated servers, then you literally are paying for something that is worse than competitor services. When you play for the PlayStation Network or you pay for Xbox Live, you know their games have dedicated servers for online play. So the the just the reason that the, the claimed reason that they're charging you um is to support those dedicated servers and if nintendo's not even offering you that then even at 20 bucks per year uh what are you paying for nothing uh you're just giving nintendo money to give them money um they're holding things ransom that don't even need nintendo uh to be a middleman to allow to happen so again Splatoon 2 is 30% slower at uh, transferring data online than the original Splatoon. It's causing some issues in high-end competitive multiplayer. Uh, and with Nintendo keep insinuating and keep pushing Splatoon 2 as an eSport, they better start getting dedicated servers for this game and all of their future online games, current and future online games on Switch, at some point in 2018. Because, uh, yeah, 
Nintendo can't afford to be behind on something like this. Uh, to give you an idea, Splatoon 2 has a worse uh, transfer rate than Minecraft, uh, which is a seven-year-old game. It, it's it's bad. I, I had the graphs up throughout this. You kind of saw uh, where it is. So, uh, man. I love Splatoon 2, folks. It, it is probably, next to Breath of the Wild, my second favorite Nintendo Switch game right now. But uh, if Nintendo wants us to be competitive, they got to step up to the plate. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, well, hit that dislike button. Otherwise, folks, I will catch you in the next one.